Welcome to this tutorial. We're going to set up the Eclipse Java Enterprise Development Environment to develop uh, Red5 Server. So first thing is we're going to add the actual Red5 plugin here. As you can see, I've already got it. But you just go into this preference section, uh, add this URL. And once you add that, um, basically it downloads the plugin and then adds it to the environment. You might have to restart Eclipse uh, to make sure it comes up in the wizard, but once you've got it there, then basically it allows uh, you to quickly create an application. Now, once you've added that link, you need to then go into this uh, install available software, select the one you've just entered from the list, and then check it. And once you check it, uh, go next in the wizard, and it should go forward and download it. Now, if the software has been updated, the plugin that is, then it would update. Um, but in this case, I've al already got it, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. Now, we should be ready to start the wizard. So if we go New Dynamic Web Project, and in there, we want to then find, hopefully, the Red5 server details. So I'm just going to call mine Red5 Test. Now, this is important because that will be the actual extra part of your URL. Now I'll select Red5 Server Runtime and I'll just go with the default Java Runtime Environment. Now if you can't find the Red5 jar then you might need to add the class path. So I've just got mine installed to C Red5 so I select the Red5 folder and you can see the Red Time directory there and now it comes up with that. Now for the configuration you want to modify that and check the Red5 application generation and uh, also it's a good idea to check the Flex frameworks, even though I haven't done so here. It's a good idea for you to uh, check that anyway for the client side development. And here the final thing there is the content route. Uh, again, that's the extension of the URL. So you can change that if you want it to be something different to the project name. Now, after that's finished, we should be able to go through and it would have set up a server and client project. Now. It also comes with a lot of the settings uh, to deploy to the server. And here you can see the source code. I'm going through the Java directory structure there, and this is org.red5.core. And we're looking at the actual application class itself. And the wizard has created a connect and disconnect. And that's basically it. Now, for the client side, we've got an XML file, which is the uh, macromedia file for creating. Uh, kind of flash flex program. So you see here we've got within that file the script for on uh, connecting and the URL and then the connection status and that on connection status function there which uh, when the event comes back it calls on connection net status which then gives an alert to us whether it's successful or not successful. Now at this point we could click uh, run on server and this is the server side that I'm trying to run now it'll ask you to configure some other aspects and I check always run on this project. Uh, we've got to make sure these directories are right here because they're often incorrect. And so you've got to set it again to your red5 folder um, and make sure that it goes C red5 through to the web apps and that's where your application when it's compiled is deployed. And also we need the C red5 folder for the scripts to actually run the server and shut down the server. And they need to be .bat, not .sh. .sh, again, is for your Linux environments. Or Now, you might get a problem where the Java home is not set. So you can see here I've got the Java problem where the Java home variable. You just go to the project properties, run as, and run configuration. And when you get in there, you'll see the environment area where you can add an environment variable. So I'm going to add the Java underscore home. It's all uppercase. Uh, you can see here you can go through the list and see what variables there are already. It might already be there, but maybe not correct. And uh, so mine's not there. I'm going to add it here. And then I'm going to add the path to the JDK that uh, hopefully you've got installed. Otherwise, you need to install it. Once you have that, uh, then we go ahead and apply that for our project and then we should be able to click run and then it should run for us. 
Now here you can see it's starting up the server and outputting information to the console and you can see that it's saying it's synchronized and it stops. So it means it's uh, loaded our project over there and it's deployed it under Red 5 Web Apps and then the name of the project, Red 5 Test. And here you can see it's deployed all the files. And then under Classes, um, the Red 5, uh, you'll see the application.class which is being compiled and that's the output from the Java file that we looked at earlier. Now you can see it's running, uh, we actually want to start the server and once we have got started, hopefully we can view it in our web browser and we're going to actually view the web address of where we'd find our application. And so this is found at our local host and put in port 5080 in this case and then forward slash uh, red5 test which was the URL and you see there it successfully listed our program. And that's pretty much it for getting your server up and running and that's now running our class file ready to go.